Hey everyone, I'm Cypher and welcome back to the channel. About 9 months ago I shared the NRF Box version 2 with you. Now the NRF Box is back with updates and improvement in both hardware and software. I'm excited to dive into all the details with you and of course show you how to build it yourself. NRF Box is a compact open source tool powered by an ESP32 that allows you to explore Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the 2.4 GHz band. Just like most of my projects, NRF Box is completely open source and available on my GitHub. Here is what we are covering today. First we will explore NRF Box features. Then we will break down the hardware and the PCB. Finally, I will show you how to build it using a breadboard and program the ESP32. If we take a quick look at version 2 and the current version, I primarily focused on making the design more efficient and reducing manufacturing difficulties based on your feedback from version 2. I also added an SD card slot which we will use it for easy firmware updates for now but I have more plans for it in the future. So what can the NRF box do? Let's break it down. First up, we have the scanner. The scanner features allows you to scan the 2.4 GHz frequency spectrum which is commonly used by devices such as Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth devices, and other wireless equipment. For example, when I start transmitting with my other NRF box on different channels, we can monitor the changes in real time. BLE spoofer mimics real BLE devices by sending fake advertising packet over the 2.4 GHz band. You can choose which type of devices you want to impersonate, select the advertising mode, and launch the spoofing operation. In the new NRF Fox firmware, we can also use this feature for Android devices. I don't think this feature was really necessary, but you asked for it, so here we go. Wi-Fi DSR lets you temporarily disrupt Wi-Fi connections by sending the authentication packets to nearby access point or devices. Effectively kicking them off the network, it's a powerful way to test network security. It's like politely asking a device to log off. The jammer feature actively interferes with wireless communication by sending out noise. I set up this feature to allow selection from 14 Wi-Fi channels. Don't confuse this feature with Wi-Fi DSR. This feature is not always 100% effective. At times, as demonstrated, it can completely disrupt the network, while other times it may only slow down the connection. The analyzer feature delivers an in-depth analysis of the wireless spectrum. Effectively scanning the entire 2.4 GHz band across 128 channels. This capability ensures the detection of activity from a wide range of protocols. Protocol allows us to disrupt different wireless protocol running on 2.4 GHz. It's a powerful tool for protocol specific jamming and stress testing. So our Apple is specially designed to exploit BLE features in Apple devices. It spoofs Apple BLE advertisements impersonating trusted devices to either trigger unintended behavior or even potential data leaks. BLE Jammer disrupts Bluetooth low energy by flooding the 2.4 GHz advertising channel with noise. 
making it harder for devices to discover or connect to each other. Next, we have two basic features for scanning BLE and Wi-Fi. BLE and Wi-Fi scanner scans for nearby BLE devices and Wi-Fi networks, including many that are normally hidden from your phone or laptop. Also, you'll get detailed information about each one. In the setting menu where you can adjust the OLED brightness and enable NeoPixel, you can also find the firmware update option. Firmware update feature keeps your NRF box up to date with ease. This tool lets you update the ESP32's firmware right from an SD card. No external tools needed. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. If you're working on a custom hardware project, NextPCB is a solid choice for PCB manufacturing. They offer high quality boards, fast production times, and support for everything from simple prototype to advanced multi-layer designs. Check them out through the link in the description and thanks for the NextPCB for supporting the channel. Let's continue by discussing the NRFbox hardware. TP4056 handles battery charging and protection for lithium batteries. CP2102, a USB to serial converter for flashing and communication. LF33, a voltage regulator that provides a stable 3.3 volt supply to the NRF box. The NRF modules are handling the 2.4 GHz operations, such as jamming and protocol attacks. The ESP32 is our core microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi and BLE providing all the processing power we need. We also have SD card slot for saving capture signals, logs and configuration files. And for this version of NRF Fox, for firmware update. And finally, the antenna connector. Often SMA or UFO allows the connection of external antenna to improve signal reception and transmission. Setting up the NRF box on a breadboard if you don't want to use a custom PCB isn't too difficult. You just need the necessary modules and a bit of patience. For the NRF24 modules, I recommend using the version with an LNA, which allows you to attach a better antenna for improved range and performance. You can find the full schematic and instruction in the NRF box wiki on its GitHub repository. To upload the NRF box firmware, you have two options. Using the Arduino IDE, this method is ideal if you want to explore the code, make modifications, and contribute to the NRF box project. It requires setting up your environment, but offer full control and flexibility. Second option is using the precompiled.bin file. This method is relatively easier. I've provided the pre-compiled firmware in the NRF GitHub repository so you can flash it directly without dealing with the code. Both methods involve a few simple steps, which I explained in the detail in the NRF box wiki. You can find the link in the description of this video. And that's it for this video. And remember, all the code, schematic and resources for this project are available on my GitHub and website. So whether you are keeping it simple on a breadboard or going all in with a custom PCB, you've got everything you need to get it started. Give it a try, experiment, and most importantly, have fun building your NRF box.